Hi everybody, it's Miss Amanda here to say I miss you and I am really excited to do some coffee painting with you today. If you've been following Ms. Finnegan's library videos and choice boards, you already know a little bit about this week's project, which has to do with something called Students Rebuild. Students Rebuild is an organization that helps kids learn a little bit about different problems and issues in the world, and then it gives kids an opportunity to do something and take action to help solve some of those problems. Right now, we're focusing on the problem of hunger, world hunger, because there are many, many people in the world and in our local communities that don't have the resources or access to the food they need to live. The more we learn about problems like this, the more equipped we are to help with those problems. You have the opportunity to help with the problem of hunger this week with your art project. All you have to do is draw a picture, an artistic picture of a recipe of some kind. It could be a real food recipe for one of your favorite dishes, or maybe for something that you've been eating a lot while you've been at home during our shelter in place, stay home order. Or it could be a more metaphorical recipe that lists different ideas that you think would help make the world a better place or solve the issue of hunger. What, whatever ideas, whatever concepts you think we need to make the world a better place. Or it could just be, again, a simple food recipe. The most important thing is that you create your recipe drawing and then you send it to either Ms. Finnegan or myself because we'll send it on to Students Rebuild. And what happens next is every picture that they receive, the Bezos Family Foundation will donate $3 for every picture to different organizations that are fighting to solve world hunger. If our whole school participated in this project, imagine how much money that would raise, quite a bit. So I'm going to be sharing my recipe with you today and my process for drawing it and creating my work of art. I'm also going to be adding a little twist to this project since the project is all about food, I'm going to use food as my medium for making this project. I'm gonna try out coffee painting, which is something I've never done before. It's gonna be a total experiment, but I thought, hey, we're dealing with food. I might as well use food to paint with. Also be sure to check out my bonus video this week, which is all about spice painting. You can see some experiments I did with painting with different spices, which is cool because they give you different colors. So if you want an extra challenge for this project this week, you could try doing the project with coffee painting or spice painting to go with your food theme. Let's get a little inspiration for our recipe projects by looking at some examples that students have already sent in on the Students Rebuild website. You can see that there are all sorts of ways to approach this project. You can use different mediums, you can write recipes, you can draw recipes, you can make sculptures. Be as creative as you want. Okay, so I've been doing some thinking about what I want to draw for my recipe, and I thought it would be cool to do a recipe for something that I've learned how to make while in quarantine, while at my house. I am not much of a bake, actually, I'm not much of a cook, and I'm, I definitely am not a baker, I don't do a lot of baking, but I have been trying some baking while I've been at home, and I thought since I'm gonna be painting with coffee, it would be fun to do a recipe that's connected to my morning coffee. I'm going to do my recipe painting about this bread I've been making. It's an Earl Grey lavender yogurt bread. I have a little piece here. It's a little bit burnt um, because like I said, I'm not much of a baker, but I, it still tastes good, mm, it's very tasty. And I've been just enjoying it in the mornings, having a little slice with my morning coffee or my afternoon tea. 
So I thought it would be nice to do a coffee painting of this. I'm also going to include the different ingredients in my painting because it's supposed to be a recipe painting, but I'm also gonna try to think of words or ideas to go with each ingredient so that my painting isn't just a food recipe, it's also like an idea recipe with ideas of words and concepts that could help make our world a better place. Yeah, so I'm excited to try it. I'm gonna get started, follow along, see how my coffee painting experiment goes and see how I break down my recipe for Students Rebuild. As usual, I'm going to start by just lightly sketching out my image with a pencil. This is gonna give me an opportunity to plan out my space and my ideas before I start painting. I'm going to put my bread in the center of my page and I'm actually using both drawings and words for my project. I'm playing with different kinds of fancy lettering and I'm being thoughtful about where I place my letters. Around the outside edge of the picture surrounding the bread, I'm putting a few key ingredients because this is a recipe. So things like the Earl Grey tea, the lemon zest, the yogurt, uh, almond flour, and of course lavender. These are the ingredients that sort of stand out and make this recipe unique. And they're also the items that I am going to connect to larger ideas about how to take action and make the world a better place. Now that my picture is all planned out, it's time to get my coffee ready to paint with. Uh, you should have an adult help you make your coffee. When you make your coffee, you wanna make it really strong. That means a lot of coffee beans and not a lot of water. I'm pouring my coffee into three different cups. And in my last cup, I'm actually putting in some of those coffee grounds so that it's a really dark, sort of thick, gritty paint. Now that my coffee is done, I get to start painting. If you saw the tulip video lesson from a few weeks back with the cabbage water wash, you'll notice that I'm applying my coffee paint in a really similar way as I did with my cabbage paint. I'm doing something called a wash. So I'm going over the whole image with my coffee paint. I'm painting the areas that are a little bit darker that I want to sort of be that brown coffee color. So all of the areas that have shadows and all of the contour lines I'm going over with my paintbrush. Then later I will let my paper dry a little bit and I'll go in with that same coffee paint and I'll add another layer to make things even darker in certain areas. I'm gonna do that probably three or four times before my picture has the amount of lights and darks and shadows and lines that I want for my finished product. So at this point, you can see that I am going over my whole picture again with a second layer of coffee paint. I'm not going over every single thing I painted the first time. I'm leaving some areas with just the first layer of paint I'm only going over the areas that I want to be a little bit of a darker brown. As we work on our recipe projects, this is a really good time for us to stop and reflect and remember, again, all of those people who are out there right now putting their health on the line to make sure that we get the food we need during this pandemic. There are still lots of artists out there that are continuing to use their art to make posters and paintings reminding us of all of the essential workers and frontline heroes who are keeping food pathways open for all of us so we can continue to get our groceries and stay safe while having the food that we need. And I, I feel really lucky for those people right now, especially as I reflect on world hunger and I work on this project. Okay, so I have now painted about three or four layers of coffee onto my picture. You can see that there are some areas where I have many layers and so it looks very, very dark. And there are some areas that I have left lighter with just one or two layers of coffee. This has given me a range of values. 
values. Value is lightness and darkness in a work of art. So I have both light, dark, and in-between values. Now I like how my picture looks, but I would like to add a little splash of color, especially since I have the lemon and the lavender, which are yellow and violet and bright colorful things that the coffee color just isn't quite working with. So I'm just using watercolor to add a few splashes of violet and yellow. I added yellow to my lemon and the butter and the little flecks of lemon zest in my cake. I can combine my yellow with a little bit of violet to create a sort of neutral gray color for my pearl gray tea. And I'll put some splashes of violet in some other parts of my picture. Mostly I'm using the violet to add a little color to my lavender plants in the corner. We know that lavender is purple, so having the violet on those flower buds will really make that lavender pop. I'll also add a little bit of my yellow and my violet to some of the words to make those letters and phrases and ingredients pop out. The last step for my recipe project is to add a few lines and trace all of my letters with a pen liner or a thin sharpie works for this step too. I'm just adding a few contour lines to my picture. Contour lines are sort of the outline of the objects in the picture and some of the main lines inside the shapes. So I'm just adding a little bit of dimension to my picture with these contour lines. I'll also trace over all of my fancy letters so that those words and phrases and ingredients stand out a little bit more. Now, I have just shown you one of infinite approaches to this recipe project. Yours might not look anything like mine. Yours might be a sculpture for all I know. Or maybe you do coffee painting or spice painting like me, but you don't have Sharpie or you don't have any words. Maybe yours is all pictures and images of your ingredients. Maybe you're making your project on a paper plate like we're about to eat it. Maybe you're putting your items into a mixing bowl. There are so many ways for you to draw your recipe. It does not have to look like mine and you can use whatever supplies you want to make your project. Okay, so that was my adventure with coffee painting and with making my recipe for Students Rebuild. I really hope that you try this project so that we can raise lots of money to help organizations that are fighting world hunger. Remember that part of this project is learning about the problem of hunger and maybe even doing a little bit of research to better understand that problem. So I do encourage you to check out Miss Finnegan's Choice Board because she has different video links and stuff that can help you on that pathway to learning more. And I also encourage you to not stop here, to get involved with helping address hunger in your local community. There are lots of organizations here in Seattle and in the state of Washington that you and your family can contribute to, you know, whether it's volunteering your time once things are a little bit safer or just getting involved with the organization and, and knowing about them. Places like Northwest Harvest and Family Works Seattle are great organizations and you can look for links in this video description to learn more about how to help with hunger. At the very least, I hope that you do some fun experiments with coffee painting or spice painting and just have some fun using those unconventional art supplies. Be sure to send your projects to Miss Finnegan or myself so that we can see them and so that we can pass them on to Students Rebuild to make sure we're earning that money for uh, solving world hunger. And also you can share your projects on Artsonia as usual so that I can see them and give you comments. That's a really important step, so don't forget to do that. Have a great week. I'll see you next time for another art lesson next week. And yeah, bye, I miss you.